Hi everybody, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of RSAC 2024. This is day four, come on inside theCUBE. Dr. Amit El Azari is here, she's the CEO and co-founder of Open Policy. Great to see you again. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me, great to see you. We had an awesome party the other night. We were co-hosting along with you, Elastic, Intel Capital, of course, Nice, Intel. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was great, wasn't and, it? Yeah, and I think you know that's what Open Policy tries to do is to bring, uh, create connections and be a platform to those connections that will never be made. So we had government officials, but then we had venture capital, and we had the innovators, and we had you with all your leadership. So, you know, we are we really seeing this in the making, both the relationship, the connections, and now, of course, with our platform, we are scaling this with technology. So, pretty exciting time. For I us. didn't know what to expect because it was at Lamar on the pier. Okay, and you know, we're down at Moscone, so you didn't know, but we walked in at maybe 10 past the hour and it was already packed. <laughs> there were people who came later who were texting me, oh, we just missed you. I mean, it was uh, really yeah, it was a, a great, great success, so congratulations. We are very honored to be a, a company one year in the making, so early stage company and be partnering with, with you and those brand names and excited to you know, kind of uh, compete with our RPR in the market because it's very competitive, right, over yeah, yeah. who's coming during RSA, but um, you know, I think it was, for me, uh, one of the best nights of the year. So. That's really appreciate good. the collaboration. Well, you had, you had a platform launch this week, didn't you, here at RSA? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Open Policy is pretty new. Uh, last RSA I was here, I was just finishing up my role at Intel as the head of cybersecurity policy, and I you know, shared my vision with the audience. I said, um, we are experiencing a moment. Everybody here coming to RSA tries to understand what's going to be the future of the market. And we know regulation, government, policy, you know, they're really, that it's a power shaping those dynamics. And we have those conversations here, the talks, but we see from this ecosystem, they're ready to engage. So last RSA I announced our vision, how we want to tech enable and leverage the power of AI and coalitions to really unlock the value of government affairs to entities, even unicorns, that today are not in the conversation. They don't see what's coming and they don't have a way to engage to influence at scale and is, Really, really fun to be here a year later with Lighthouse customers like Hidden Layer, like Kiteworks, like Armies, and you know a lot of more demand and launching our platform. So we have our product, we are bringing it to our customers, and this allows our ecosystem to really take their product and understand what's coming from proposed policies and regulation that is right. changing on the time and connect the dots. Connect the dots for their marketing collateral, for their product strategy, and then even participate in the conversation, influence. So I think that though this is, we had a conversation about this last night and I think to me what's so special about what it is you're doing and so unique about it is that you're kind of democratizing the process mm -hmm. because you're working with companies who might not, who can't afford to hire lobbyists in DC and that sort of thing. So I know you've testified before Congress, I know you've done some amazing things, you know, at, at really an early juncture with regard to open policy, but, but talk with me some more, talk with us some more about just that, that passion you have for democratizing that access to knowledge and to government, what's happening on a regulatory standpoint. Yeah, fantastic. So, um, you know, the vision for open policy came a little bit from my experience. You know, I, would, I was doing this important work in one of the best technology companies in the world, right. uh, you know, intercorporation, and it is amazing to see how much being able to know what proposed regulations and market requirements and outcomes, um, you know, see them ahead of the curve and have that insight and then being able to shape it. And it's a capability that is today really reserved to that 1%. Yeah. Because government affairs professionals that are really experts on cyber policy or AI policy and privacy policies, we don't have a lot of us. So these people usually work uh, for large organizations, very big tech. and. I saw this opportunity um, to do two things. A, bring more innovators to the fold. Because frankly speaking, we need their perspective. Mm. The cutting edge innovation that is being developed and showcased right here on the floor at RSA, those are the type of technologies we want to bring to the front lines, right, as we combat threats. And part of that is educating the government. So I saw there was a need, but the need had to be uh, answered by an answer which is not just people, because that's not scalable. So 
the idea came from democratizing and leveling the playing field, but it had to be complemented, complemented with technology, with AI, with a platform, and coalitions. So a lot of our approach is not to try to come in one-on-one -on -one to government, but bring those innovators together. Uh, so this is why my co-founder, uh, David Duzan, comes in and is a second timer CTO, and he really brings that technology expertise. And you know, we are seeing that there is a need for this, and we are starting to see the results, like the actual engagement with governments are bringing our perspective forward, and ultimately, this creates market opportunities because if you see what's coming, you can design better, yeah. and if you engage, right, then you see that government understands there is a need to have those security solutions in the requirements. So super exciting for us uh, to be able to be that bridge and just extremely grateful for all our early adopters and this RSA has been fantastic for us, so we have, we are converting a lot more customers, we have a lot of actually uh, inbound, uh, and we are excited to scale, and this is where the platform comes in. What's so important about the work that you're doing is this whole notion of democratization. Yeah. You mentioned several, Hidden Layer, uh, uh, you said Armis is also part of that. These are smaller organizations that don't generally have the influence, that's something that right. you said you can bring to the table. So often, public policy favors those big giant companies, like an Intel, okay, and then you get regulatory capture and then the others are shut out of the market. Yeah. By bringing the innovation in, does a couple things, I would think. One is it, it, it modernizes, helps modernize anyway the public policy, keep it closer to the actual activity on the ground, and the other is it allows everybody to participate, not just those big companies that are you know, monopolistic or, or monopoly-like where they have so much control and power in the industry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and Intel actually is a partner of us, so um, they've, they've done a great job in actually supporting others and bringing them to the fold, but generally speaking, um, you know, even though it's really important to have the perspective of big tech and government, and you mm. know, those large companies are doing a lot to elevate others, the reality is, is that there are a lot of solutions, especially for security and for AI, that are going to be naturally developed first within the startups, because they want to take risk, right? And this is why we see all these acquisitions in the market, they're able to bring them. What we are doing is bridging the innovation voice directly into the government. And some of our customers are smaller, some of them like armies, you know, they have government affairs capabilities and they have coalitions and they use us to scale. Because a part of our platform is not just about creating you an avenue to see what's coming and connecting it to your roadmap and do better marketing, it's also creating a coalition around you, but it also allows an organization that has one person for government affairs to scale their work to benefit different parts of, um, of the business itself. So, pretty exciting time. Um, definitely there is a demand for this. We're mm -hmm. excited to be the solution, but we are going to grow, right, and, and see what more applications we, we can um, have uh, in this space. I can tell you that from a lot of our customers, they're eager for federal marketing, right? So we are helping with compliance narrative. That is not less important to change you to meet the environment as we are changing the environment collectively right, to meet the innovation. Do you, does this have a global scope? So today, um, in our feeds, uh, we are starting to also include information that is coming from uh, other regulators. We know that in the policy space, part of it, the complexity of influencing and understanding what matters is we just have a lot. You know, let's just take one example, the executive order on AI. Such an important development. We have about 50 different documents being development, developed under that executive order. So that duplicity, especially when it scales globally, that's part of what we, we solve. It's like we take all that information and we generate a AI, we can really focus on matter. So today the approach we take is, um, we call it strategic global, which we would focus on the main, main hub of regulatory development, so certainly 5i, certainly Europe. That is important because the future of regulation in AI, in cybersecurity, in privacy, is not happening in silos, right? right. The US yes. is looking at the EU and it's all happening together. Um, but we still need to be strategic so we don't cover all of the world. We take the approach of the way a policy expert at a big company would do it and try to democratize that approach and learn from that approach to scale it on the platform for those different companies. So can we go through an example? So for instance, you know that EU is going to lead perhaps in privacy. Yes. So th that would inform the strategy as an example. Absolutely. Okay. So the way we work is we track, I'll give you a real example. 
uh, we do a lot of work on product security. In fact, I'm very honored that we were part of the launch of the IoT Cyber Trust Mark labeling initiative that I think was also discussed here at RSA. Big development, we are going to have labels uh, that demonstrate the security of IoT, consumer IoT devices all around the United States. So we were part of that. Uh, but as we track that, we know that there is a big development also in Europe, the European Cyber Resilience Act. So we look at that as well and how our engagement strategy and the things we track take into account not just US. And in fact, we advocated in the, in the process of creating the program, we participated in the process, we filed comments, we brought our, 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 our companies to the table and um, the FCC, the Federal Communication uh, Commission, adopted our approach and we said in order to support more alignment between Europe and the US, we need this type of scope for the program. And they adopted our approach and they cited us. So that was a big, big honor for us, especially that on the other side there were giants like LG and Samsung, so that was, um, kind of a little bit of a, of a real example of how we brought the innovators to the table, drove the impact, tracked it globally, and now we think there is a better result for security because we are securing in a way that allows more and more companies to comply because it reduces the burden from kind of the regulatory duplication. So that's part of what we do, but it starts with bringing those perspectives to the table mm -hmm. to engage. And it used to be the case that you had to have very unique access, right, to very unique experts to really being able to be at that level of talking with the commission. And we see from the commission they were eager, eager to hear the perspective of innovators. So we use the EU example, and that's pretty obvious and prominent. As you see things like sovereign cloud, people want to keep data in their own right. country, or you know, people talking now about sovereign AI and private AI. Do you see any other pockets emerging, or do you see a very diffuse, you know, dip country by country, which maybe makes things more challenging? <laughs> I love that question, because what we're trying to do is, like what you just, the, the specific question you ask is like, we have this major wave of sovereignty requirements. Mm. Um, you know, people, organizations that have access to that wave and see that two, three years ahead can create a strategy to create a technology to solve that. So we saw the sovereignty requirements evolving and then we saw the big cloud provider coming in with a sovereign cloud. This is because they had the government affairs professionals that see what's coming and they have enough time to design the solution. That's exactly the type of insights we are trying to bring to organization of all sizes with our platform. But to answer your specific question, I'm super excited about uh, what we're going to see with governance. So, Across the board in security and AI and privacy, the regulation is going to create a, uh, what we call a, a, a mesh. So if you're a CISO that doesn't, uh, is not looking into AI governance, you might be left behind. So this regulatory mesh between the requirements of cyber, privacy and AI, and regulators doubling down on attestations, on measurements or artifacts of compliance, is creating a big opportunity for governance companies. So, you know, not a surprise, in our ecosystem we have companies that are really in the cutting edge of not just securing, but helping their organizations to address the governance, the, you know, the risk issue, and that's, it's going to be, that will continue to grow. So that's one trajectory that is very clear from the EU and US and what's coming. Well, and open policy can play a role in sort of, sort of creating global standards, right, and influencing those global standards. I know in the United States, you get sometimes certain regulations, you have 50 states, they have 50 different yeah. you know, regulations, and it's a real problem for companies to comply. Um, a lot of times, some of those may or may not make sense, so to the extent that you can sort of neutralize those differences across the globe, I, I know it's going to be, you know, obviously, places like China and other countries are you know, they're probably a little more difficult, but there, there could be a lot of commonality that you can affect. Absolutely, one of the most interesting use cases of our platform, uh, which is actually an interest for governments, yep. is it allows one government to see what other government, everything is public, but they, yeah. they be able to connect the dots and kind of see what's, what's coming, um, that is helpful, not just yeah. for organization, but also for governments. And yes, a lot of the process of engaging allows us to see, oh, we have a gap here in the technology outcome, but it's a small gap, then we file comments, then we reach them together, then it's a lot easier for our innovators to create a solution that is not just addressing the US or even the federal agency, right, um, concern, it's now addressing 
two big markets, mm -hmm. US, right, and EU. And the product security work that we've done on IoT is a great example for that. So that's exactly what we want to do, but we want we, we want to scale the ability to spot those issues. So this is where the AI comes in, this is where the tracking comes in, but also the policy expertise. Um, so our tech-enabled approach suggests that it's not just about the SaaS, that's great, but you also need to have the experts that you know how to look those, at those documents okay. and create the right narrative and spot the issues. So, everything that you're talking about is really, what I'm hearing is, the pitch is, we're stronger together. Absolutely. Innovators, uh, cutting edge technology, visionaries, and so to me, when I think about, okay, if I'm you and your sales pitch, like, how is it possible to not say, yes, I'm in? <laughs> you know, I mean really, everything that you've talked about in terms of what Open Policy does, bringing coalition together, bringing experts together that you probably certainly don't have, you don't have the money to hire, you know, you don't have the expertise. It's a, I, I don't know how you ever get to the no, because yeah. it's so attractive. We are, frankly, very excited about the opportunity. When we started that journey, um, you know, um, we wanted to validate that government affairs value is starting to be considered as a top business development strategic capability yeah. of a business. It's just, it hasn't been available, right? Because there is no path to influence if you're not a crowd. There are not a lot of experts. People know, don't know where to find those experts. Right. And you know, it is actually very overwhelming and we're excited about it. Uh, but there are some companies, you know, part of our journey was to figure out who to sell. The very small companies, the seed companies, we have a, a, I think we have one seed company. Sometimes it's just too early, yeah. but we still give back. You know, so we would work with them, we would try to give them advice, and then they mature into the A, and they convert as, as a customer. So sometimes, you know, they say no because they're too early, yeah. but frankly speaking, um, I think I'm really excited because I think there is a model here that works, yeah. um, and there is an opportunity, and what's striking is that the bigger players are helping the smaller players. Yeah, yeah that's right? great. This is the coalition model. Yeah. And yeah. Um, sometimes you would have a case where uh, companies in one side of the solution, let's just take you know, OT security, can work with an IoT security solution company and they come together right. to increase the collective both time, but also just yeah. awareness of the problem. Everybody wins. So it, it really is about not just leveling the playing field because the regulatory capture issue is real. Yeah. Uh, it's also about creating a solution that can really scale. And I had conviction when we started the journey, uh, me and my co-founder, we had conviction. This is not a consultancy <coughs> because it cannot scale. Mm -hmm. It's also not a pure SaaS because we need tech enabled. Uh, but above all, it's not a one-on-one. -on -one. We yeah. need the coalition model, right? The partnering in order to really drive impact. Yeah. And some of our organizations, our partners, they're interested in the intelligence, they, they're interested in the marketing. They want to just, you know, they want to be really focusing on, on changing uh, them to meet the environment, but then, you know, when there is that appetite for engagement, that's where it, I'm, I'm just like so excited to see this. And we had the Secure by Design pledge. This is our say, you know, one yeah. of the most exciting things that we had this week is, of course, the effort by CISA, by DHS with the Secure by Design pledge. And I think we brought about 10 companies to that effort. So out of the 68 that signed, 10 companies came from our ecosystem, including uh, I think the smallest signer of the pledge, which is Lasso Security. So super exciting thing, and we are, we are seeing that it's actually happening, and the policymakers are also excited about that. It's really remarkable what you've put together. I mean, your experience at Intel, as I said, Intel's a great partner. They have affected public policy globally. Pat Gelsinger, of course, running around the world, educating government, yeah. governments on the importance of, of, of semiconductors. Congratulations on all your work, and sounds like the best is yet to come. Thank you so yeah. much, and thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited uh, to see how next year is going to look. We love our partnership. Yeah. Thank you so much for the collaboration. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back right after this short break. You're watching theCUBE from RSAC 2024. Right back.